Okay. All right. The title. I'm. I move fast, guys. So, but I want to make this interactive, and then I want to provide some valuable informations tonight. Um, so that let's let's get this going. Okay. Uh, title: Three things you can do right now to increase profits in these uncertain times. So you can double, even triple your practice profits in 2022 and beyond. So what I'm going to cover today: three things you need to do right now in these uncertain times. The number one thing you should never stop doing right now. The fastest way to double, even triple your profit and thrive your practice. I'm going to show you how I developed seven-figure podiatry practice working only four days a week, seeing 10 to 15 patients a day. Let me pull the chat. Is that sound exciting? If it's exciting, please type seven in the chat box. If I can show you the way you can develop seven plus, seven figure plus practice working four days a week. Give me seven, give me seven. Good, good, Howard. Zahid, Ra Roshina, awesome. Oh, one doctor put like 10 consecutive sevens. That's amazing. All right, let's, let's get going. So who am I? I? I've seen a lot of doctors here who I'm seeing the names first time. So just in case, Quick one minute. I'm not gonna read it, so please read it. You know, I'm I'm a like proficient and expert in MIS, fellow associate professor in AAFAS, which I'm going to speak in June, assistant surgical instructor in show teaching MIS uh, for four years, and then after COVID, we haven't done it. And I'm a CEO of my consulting uh, business since 2016, and I wrote a book, Opt Out how to opt out of insurance plans and take back financial control of your private practice. You can find it on Amazon, but don't buy anything. If you stay until the end, we'll give you a special link. You can get this book for free, okay? So I've been, you know, in different conferences, 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 labs. This is my own lab that I started organizing since 2018 for minimally invasive surgery at OLC. Who's been to OLC in Rosemont, Illinois, by the way? I'm just curious. If you've ever been to that first class cadaver lab venue in Rosemont, Illinois, AAOS headquarter building, that's where I host um, these uh, events there every year. You guys uh, never been to this lab? If you have been in this lab, please type yes. No? Wow. No, yes. So this is uh, like not yet. Okay. Oh, you're coming in Ju uh, July, Howard? I think I've seen your name. Awesome. Steph Stefan. Cool. Cool. There you go, JB. All right. So I did it 2019, 2020. Oh, this is 2022, which is coming in July 15 and 16 this year. It's sold out, guys. I sold it, sold out in 45 days. But um, I might have a few tickets left. But again, uh, stay at the, till the end of the webinar, then I might give you a link if you still want to attend this uh, web, I mean, the live event, in-person event. Okay, let's dive in. So three things you need to do right now as a podiatrist in these uncertain times. Number one, marketing. Marketing, uh, no surprise. Maybe surprise to some of you, but the number one thing you should never stop doing even right now is marketing. Marketing, in fact, you should increase it, increase this right now. Social media platforms is cheaper to advertise compared to the traditional platform. You should you already know kind of this, right? Facebook, uh, Instagram, now even TikTok. What type of marketing you can do right now? So I'll give you actual specific examples. Three types of marketing you should do, right? Branding, lead generation marketing. You guys might want to take notes and reputation management and social proof. So there's a difference. Branding, it's more of image, right? You're on top of your potential patient's mind when they think about foot and ankle when they think about their own problems or their family, friends' problems, 
who they can think of. In order for you to achieve that, you need to focus on the branding side of marketing. So video views, specifically that's for Facebook here, but if you can see uh, video view marketing is very cheap. So this one, if you can see cost for results for video views that I'm running for my practice and doctors I'm working with, average cost per result for potential patients to watch your videos, meaning when they scroll through their social media on the phone and then they stop and then watch your video, that's um, basically where it counts as a video view. Cost per lead for video view, no, I'm sorry, cost per lead is $10.31. But if you look at the cost per video view, through place only two cents. So imagine if you have, I don't know, $1, you'll have 50 views, right? If you have $10, you'll have 500 views. If you have $100, if you spend $100 a month, that'll be 5,000 views. So you see how it works? Branding is cheaper if you know how to utilize Facebook video view campaign. Lead generation marketing, in other words, it's very different. Um, you're targeting, you're targeting audience. You're utilizing the big data of Facebook. If I focus on Facebook right now, and some of you already know, but Facebook owns Instagram. So if you utilize Facebook marketing, then you can actually target Instagram viewers as well, usually slightly younger generation. And I haven't really you know, messed with TikTok yet, to be honest. I have plenty of leads coming from Facebook and um, uh, Instagram, right? So you need to learn the concept of funnel. Imagine visualize funnel. Like when you look at the funnel, it's got wide, you know, the mouth, right? And then the toward down, it's like very narrow tip. So you're pouring the abundance of leads, abundance, abundance of lead, abundant leads around your region, you're gonna do geo-targeting, right? You can do gender, age, uh, you can do income, you can, you can narrow your audience, target audience, and then funnel them into your funnel and then get them nurtured, getting them to like it, like you, trust you, know you, like you, trust you, like KLT, right? And then getting them into your funnel and you get their contact information through HIPAA compliant landing, you know, landing funnel, uh, marketing funnel. And then what you need to do, now you have their contact information, which is your asset. So you can nurture them and you can really communicate with them so that they become your patient. That's a lead generation marketing. It's different from branding. So again, retargeting, I already mentioned. I'm not going to go into too much detail. Just make sure you have to do HIPAA compliance marketing because you're dealing with PHI, protected health information. So you don't want to kind of use like nonchalant marketing and kind of abuse you know, patient information in case your uh, database gets hacked or something. So you have to follow the HIPAA compliance. Okay, still very cheap, but it requires more in-depth training and delegation to the right type of marketing team in order for you to, again, implement lead generation marketing. Reputation management, I mean, no surprise, you need five-star reviews. It doesn't cost, the, the good thing about this, it doesn't cost a dime to social media platform. You can achieve and you can um, gather the many, many five-star reviews, if you know the way to attract and gather your, your review. So I call it pa uh, patient-focused marketing, patient-focused marketing, meaning it doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter what kind of board certification you have. That's all doctor's ego and doctor's pride. Uh, don't get me wrong, doc. I mean, you know, it takes years of expertise and experience to get you where you are. But when it comes to patients, they don't care. They want to see if you can fix their problem. So that kind of helps you uh, copywriting and angles of your marketing. You want to focus on patient in order to attract them through social media or YouTube. By the way, YouTube is not social media. 
So I'll tell you right now, YouTube is search marketing. Social media marketing and search marketing is different. YouTube patients actually search for their keywords and their problems. So YouTube is very powerful. I'm definitely bullish on YouTube this year and beyond. Social media has its own place, but YouTube is completely different animal. So anyway, you can build the authority of your expertise through rep reputation management. Uh, by doing so, patient-focused marketing, right? So it doesn't matter how good you are, but patients will talk about how good you are. And other potential patients will watch other patients talking about your practice and your services that's much more trustable. And patients can relate because patients talk about your service. And other patients listen to these patients. They feel a lot more connected and resonated so that you can bring more patients to your practice. So patient-focused marketing is more connection, more trust, more new patients. Cool? All right. So again, testimonial videos, videos are very powerful. And, you know, there's, it, it is art and science to create converting testimonial. I'm big on conversion. Now, marketing, this is a little bit off tangent, but marketing is to generate leads but you need to learn conversion so that your marketing leads become patients. So there's a like fine line, you have to bridge that gap from patient leads to converted patients. Anyways, patient testimonial videos, powerful to convert. Okay. So all this reputation side, it doesn't cost you money. Now, number two, so number one is marketing. You never stop doing. Number two, learn and improve your skills. Perfect time to develop. Cool. It's the perfect time to develop and improve in these uncertain times. It can make you and your practice unique. You see where I'm getting into. It's a niche, right? So I highly advise for you to learn this skill set right now. And Sarah and Anne already introduced me um, where my niche is. So this is no surprise, but that's okay. So this is the best one, I believe, because it not only proved to my own practice when I converted and transformed my practice in 2014, I helped so many other podiatrists convert and transform their practice to seven figure. So many of them. So this is the best one, which is high demand, proven to be effective and help many patients. Why is not? Okay, lack of supply, meaning high demand, lack of supply. What does that mean to you? It's a unique competitive advantage. It's a minimally invasive front ankle surgery. Without a doubt, if you can implement even small portion of your practice, surgical practice, combining simple minimally invasive surgeries, for example, it will already take your practice to a different level and I'll prove it to you. So you'll be able to establish a powerful niche. You'll help many patients. You'll become an authority leader in your region and you'll be able to increase pricing to premium level. Now, this part you have to opt out. If you're participating in certain insurance networks, you cannot increase pricing. Okay, so let's, you know, be, be uh, transparent here. And, you know, I'm a man of integrity. If you are participating, you cannot increase pricing. You may be able to increase RVU and argue with the insur insurance network that you can save them so much money by doing these procedures in where I'm going to talk about number three. Okay. Cool. And even if you stay in insurance network, you still have a huge leverage because of minimally invasive surgery. So I always like to show this picture in my webinar, many webinars. If you see this picture, this is pre-op. I want to see what doctors here want to do. What is your surgical plan? What is your surgical planning for this? Painful second toe, painful even third toe of right foot, fourth foot, I mean, fourth digit. What is your choice of a surgical procedure to help this patient? Type it, type it away. 
in the chat box. I usually see certain, some answers there. I want to see some answers. It's okay. There's no right or wrong, doc. It's surgeon's discretion. I just want to see. Anybody, doc? Amputation second toe. Yep. Very common answer. Anybody else? Anybody else other than amputation of second toe? All right. Well, I'll show you the post-op. Matter of fact, this patient had other toes. It was just so contracted. Oh, yeah. Plantar plate repair was common too. Thanks for the answer. MIS, MR2, and MI. Oh, there you go. Rudolf, MIS. All right. So this is done by orthopedic surgeons in uh, South America, before and after. Learned from same mentor of mine, Dr. Stephen Aisha. But look at that. Save the toe. Not only save the toe, bring all the other toes straight. No fixation. Immediate weight bearing. Perfectly healed. So another before and after. Okay, let's move on. The rising demand. I mean, there's no surprise. It's a textbook written by orthopedic surgeon in Spain. This is considered as a Bible of MIS. Mariano de Prado. And funny thing, cool thing. It's not funny. Full cool thing is when you open this first page of this book, I mean, the cover, it will say, Dr. Mariano de Prado will say, this book is dedicated to my mentor, Dr. Stephen Aisha. And Stephen Aisham is a podiatrist, and he was he is my mentor. So that isn't it cool? He traveled all over the world and then taught a lot of orthopedic surgeons of MIS when when MIS was kind of looked down upon in the United States. That's why I never knew about MIS when I graduated in 2001, practicing traditional open surgeries for 10 years, and later I found out about MIS. Anyways, there are a lot of articles published, hundreds of hundreds of published articles in medical journal uh, about effectiveness, equally effectiveness uh, to compare to traditional open procedures. So if you focus, you will find all this evidence. It's not, someone, some people kind of argue, oh, MIS is not evidence-based, which is not true. There's a lot of studies done already. So I'm just showing you pull several several articles but there's hundreds of them okay and then articles if you notice almost every edition nowadays past three four years you see some kind of mis procedures in medical uh, you know journal so you can see 2018 mis dmdo the american orthopedic friend ankle society MIS carcaneal sliding osteotomy. Here we go. Since 2018, orthopedic foot and ankle surgeons in United States soil, they're doing cadaver labs on MIS. Dr. Mark Myerson, very uh, well-known MIS orthopedic foot and ankle surgeons. But you can see MIS bunion, MIS calcaneal osteotomy, MIS arthroscopic, MIS this and that, right? Okay. And this is even their lecture that you can see the screen right there. That's uh, what we use Aisham Burr for a lesser metatarsal osteotomy slide. And actually, in fact, this, this slide is from that textbook, Mariano de Prado. Um, even our community now, you know, APMA, and, and this was, I think it was APMA, right? No, Georgia, Georgia uh, GPMA Summit, and I was invited to speak about MIS, right there, here, you see the introduction of MIS. Twin City, uh, Minnesota conference, last year I was invited to speak about MIS, and I'm going there this year again. This is their program, MIS Bunyan. So demand is there. Market trend, value-based healthcare. Insurance networks prefer office-based surgery. Patients are aware of MIS now. So if you can see this one, I'm sure you've seen this graph before. 
Before it was fee for service, right? But now time goes and we're like right around here now. Fee for service is almost non-existent now because the value-based reimbursement, meaning if you perform minimally, no, I'm sorry. If you perform free ankle surgery at the hospital, for example, 90 day global period, and you get like what? How much do you guys in, we get reimbursed if you perform bunion surgery at the hospital right now? In Illinois here is like $500. Ridiculous. Can you believe we do bone surgeries and insurance pay you $500? And then you have, you cannot bill for 90 days. So yeah, well, I mean, how much in your state for bunion? I think it's average around 500. Anyway, I'm going to keep going. New opportunity. 425, a joke, we get four to six hundred dollars in network. Austin Bunyan acting with the screw. Matthew, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, I, I feel you. I feel you on that. 400, 500, it's a joke. It discourages us to do any more surgeries. And hospital base discourages patients to go to surgery center or hospital because of their huge facility fee, uh, even co-insurance is bigger than our, our surgical fee. But let me give you a new opportunity here. You need to seriously consider implementing MIS. But before I get into the number three of today's three things, I wanna give you some, some um, I don't know, some more information about MIS so that it so that you're more aware of it, and then it doesn't sound too foreign to you anymore. And then hopefully I can trigger some curiosity for you. So with a proven system, learning process becomes much faster and simpler. You agree with that, right? Any, anything that you wanna learn, you need a system. But anyways, fundamentals of MIS number one, hand positions and motions. You just need to know two ways. It might be too simple. I'd say one, Pencil grip and two, golf club grip. I call it pencil grip, golf club grip. So pencil grip, that's how you hold this uh, special MIS drill set to make bone cuts. And this is golf, cl golf club grip. This is how you can apply some more pressure to reduce like medial bony eminence in this case. And four key steps in every single MIS procedures. So here's the system, right? Four key steps. Oh, thank you for someone just give me, send me a nice thumb. I didn't know that, like thumbs up, thumbs up icon pops up. Number one, make some incision. Number two, create a portal. Number three, come on, come on webinar. It doesn't, okay, sorry about that. It doesn't pop to the next one. Do the work meaning tenotomy for soft tissue or capsulotomy or bone work, reducing the bump or osteotomy, and then post-op dressing and splinting. Incision, portal, do the work, dressing. That number four though, post-op dressing is very important if you do non-fixating internally, non-fixating osteotomies, post-op dressing and splinting is our way of external dressing and splinting to fixate that osteotomy um, there's a lot involved, okay? There's definitely a um, learning curve. I, I, I wouldn't, you know, disagree, but we can shorten that learning curve. So make an incision. Here's the incision site. Okay. Yeah, I'm seeing some questions. I'll answer those questions. An incision that's typical, revered in Aishan, bunionectomy incision. This is one of my go-to bunion procedure. I learned directly from my mentor, Aishan. Um, extensor tenotomy incision. Digital cone procedure incision. I'm just proving the point. Number one, right? Step one, make an incision. Number two, create a portal meaning through the incision to the bone and you need to create portal, you know, move the soft tissue away, periosteal tissue away, capsule away. So you're prepping the area where you're gonna do osteotomy. 
By the way, a lot of doctors tell me, oh, TJ, you're doing blind. I'm not performing any MIS procedures blind. Okay, it's, uh, it's a common myth. We know exactly where you are cut I'm cutting. There are many ways to develop that sensation. So your hands, you know, other things, other, other um, sensations, right? Other than relying on your vision, there are many ways to know exactly where the bird tip is. So we're not cutting any bone blind. Anyway, create a portal, create a portal. And number three, do the work. That's me doing a uh, bunion osteotomy, extensor tenotomy, digital exostosis. You see how create a portal and then lay gently that little burr on top of the digital exostosis, and then you gently grind them down. Very simple procedure. Patient will love you. Almost no swelling, no pain. Patients walk immediately. You can help so many people. Uh, this is phalange example of uh, digital osteotomy. Instead of we do typically like, I mean, traditional open surgery usually prefer arthroplasty, take the head out and put implant or put uh, temporary fixation. How MIS likes like to do is create osteotomy at the base of proximal phalanx to drop the like dorsally contracted digit and then we do also middle phalanx osteotomy to bring the distal tip up instead of destroying the joint. So joint salvaging, and the, basically you're creating surgical fracture at the base, sometimes neck or sometimes middle phalanx. And then it's a great procedure for shortening, toe shortening procedure as well. And you can fix from flexible hammer toe to rigid hammer toe. Where, why I'm spending a little more time here in the hammer to and digital exosis? Because you can start, you can get started with simpler procedures rather than jumping onto calcaneal osteotomy or retrocal um, reducing osteotomy or first met head or base osteotomy. Before you jump onto those osteotomies, you can hone your skills and develop your sensation with simpler, less, less complicated procedures. So before, after. And trust me, there's no arthroplasty in there. There's no implant in there. You just create a surgical fracture and let that surgical fracture heal. Taylor's bunionectomy, again, if you can reduce the bump, it's faster way, but you can also do osteotomy at the fifth metatarsal and shift it. Yep, okay, so I'll answer those questions. Revere denation bunionectomy, you can see this is, uh, we call it dorsal distal to plantar proximal. There's a reason for that, this angulation, and there's a reason it's close to the head near the cartilage ends because it's intercapsular. So everything's intercapsular when you make this osteotomy in such a way you can reduce PASA, you can um, Correct the bunion deformity in this way, and it's very stable osteotomy, even without fixation. And then when patients put pressure to the ground, this angulation makes it locks. And also it, it corrects sesamoid position. And you can see here how little damaging other important, you know, uh, vascular, neurovascular structures if you know where to go for it, and then how you can kind of create a portal so that it, it, you know what this procedure actually, how they did it, it was done by a famous anatomist in Spain. They let Dr. Aisham and Dr. Mariano de Prado perform surgeries on cadaver. And then an anatomist dissected layer by layer to confirm they didn't damage anything outside of this bone. It's amazing. How, how this, um, you know, cleverly almost, how wise these procedures are done. Of course, over the years, it's been improved and developed. So you can see that cut. This is Aiken. This is Revere Denation. It's been published in the textbook and medical journals. Aiken. And this is my procedure here. You can see I uh, made a, you know, make a head osteotomy and shift it. And then here's a aching, this is before dressing. And here's the uh, second hammer toe to drop the hammer to deformity. Uh, another one before and after, you see there's no screw. I have not 
ever seen non-union. A lot of doctors worry about non-union. I have not seen non-union. And I ask MIS experts around the world, they say 0.001%. They almost, almost everybody, anybody I speak to, they never seen non-union. Uh, in the premise of if you do the right technique, right? If you burn the bone, if you speed up the osada drill too fast, um, yeah, obviously then you, you might be able to, you know, sacrifice some bone tissue and delay the union. Yes, you might be able to see, that's where I'm getting at. If you speed up too much and burn the bones, then you might see a delayed union, but never seen non-union before and after. That was inside. Yeah, when traditional open surgeon, like me, I was traditional open surgeon, it made me uncomfortable to see some like x-rays like this, but I included this x-ray on purpose because this is outside and this is inside. I mean, it could be like better looking, but guess what? Patient don't care. Patient loves me and my practice and MIS procedures because this patient particularly on the other foot was done traditionally. And she said like two years of healing time and then couple of lesser med was um, overcorrected with a, a while, you know, lesser med osteotomy with fixation. They had to redo it. But this way, a beautiful thing, patient walk on it and it finds uh, it's, the, uh, it's ideal level. It's this difficult concept to understand. I get it. You need a little bit of leap of faith. Okay. So it basically follows Wolf's law. Where, pay, where our body biomechanically, uh, mother nature, where they want to heal, level it, that's where they're gonna heal. So this classic example, I did bunion, aching, hammer toe second and third, and then lesser metal osteotomy second and third, it healed beautifully. Find its own level. Before and immediate after, immediate post-op right here. What did I do? Bunion. Aching, second hammer toe, and fifth mat uh, shifting on the other. So that's this patient before and after. Okay. And of, of course, post op dressing, I said, is very important. You need to learn how to splint them correctly and then encourage patient to weight bear sooner than later. But I highly recommend everybody goes through my surgeries. 100% post-op um, cam walking boot. So in just I, my patient protocol, post-op cam boots for two weeks, surgical shoe for two weeks, and regular gym shoes or loose fitting shoes. Almost everybody goes through that. So before and after, some pictures of post-op dressing and splinting. Okay, number three. So uh, no, what is number one? Marketing. Number two, MIS as your skill set if you consider, right? Number three, office space surgery. That's the key. That's gonna be huge differentiating point. Insurance benefit prefers, insurance companies prefers. My screen is not viewable. One doctor said, is that true, Sarah or Anne? Can you guys see? Uh, yeah, I can still see it. So I'm. Yeah, I can see too. Cool. All right. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll message him here. So insurance will pay you. I put it here very conservatively. 20 to 30% more reimbursement for the exact same procedures. I'm not saying like you add some tricky fees or facility fees or trays. I'm not saying that. Apple to Apple, exact same CPT code, insurance company will automatically reward you at least 30%. I just got a letter from uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. I know a lot of other states got same letter from Blue Cross. They even say in that one page letter, it's amazing, listen to this. If you perform foot and ankle procedures in your office space, we will reimburse 15% in addition to that reward you already get, okay? But they even say that in the next sentence, 
However, if you perform foot and ankle procedures in the hospital, they will penalize you for 15%. Can you believe that bullshit BS? I'm sorry, I, I, you know, I, I cannot help it. They even say they're going to deduct 15% on top of that $425 reimbursement for bunion at the hospital. There you go. Yeah, crying, right? They say 15%. I wish I put that copy. I have it in copy in my drive. I forgot to put it in here, but I can send you guys. If you guys want to see the evidence, I got the letter from Blue Cross. 15% more if you do it in the office or 15% less of what you get already if you do it in the hospital. Patient benefit, convenient, comfortable, patient see the same friendly staff. They don't have to mingle with other patients in the big facility, especially after the COVID, right? And saving of huge out-of-pocket costs because your patients do not have to pay co-insurance portion of facility fee which is easily a few thousand dollars. Patients, you tell them, hey, I can perform this procedure in my office-based surgical suite. Patients, most patients are already aware of their deductibles and co-insurance. Tell, you know, this is throughout the United States, anywhere I've been helping doctors, 100% with my heart, your patients will jump on. Doc, when can you do it? Doc, I want to sign up right now. So if you have maybe blind, I mean, not blind, sorry, sunglasses, don't look at this as your own comfort level at, at, up to now. If you want to transform, you have to open your mind and then see what top 1% podiatry practice owners are doing, especially if they're surgeon. They're all moving into office-based surgery, okay? Your benefit, here we go, future-proof. Doesn't matter COVID. Hey, COVID, war, unfortunately, um, stock market crash, let's say real estate, you know, the bubbles are going to be burst. Doesn't matter what happens in the environment. Patients still have foot problems who want to fix, and if you can offer this type of environment, imagine it's good for patient, but it's good for you. Number three there, saves time. Imagine your opportunity cost that you're losing every day. You go to hospital, waiting for your turn, drinking bitter coffee. I, I know we all have been there. You know, some doctors before you, they just got delayed or post, you know, postponed. And you just sit there in the waiting room and then you come fighting through the traffic. Imagine this two, three, four hours of wasting. You, it's going to be total under your control if you start performing in your office. So this, just to prove my point, why office-based surgery, right? Here, orange color, that's inflation. Workers learning, I mean earning, deductible increase. And look at this skyrocketing single coverage deductible. You see it? Oh, this was premium. You see how tricky they are? They look like following the inflation for the premium. But look at the deductible. What does it mean? Patient portion, it's skyrocketing. So nobody wants to go to hospital. And at the same time, we don't want to go to hospital for $425 for legal liability. Forget it. So that's why the insurance company is driving US healthcare. Healthcare system, let me tell you right now in this official webinar, it's broken. It's not good for patient, it's not good for doctors. So would you continue to fight that this insurance game at the hospital or you want to create your own fate and build profit, profitable practice, providing the healthcare your patients need? Okay, I want you to think about it a little bit, kind of sleep on this idea. 
Obamacare, we, we all know it screwed up, right? Screwed up. So I'm not going to read this. Total Medicare cuts, $716 billion. So again, who's going to take this effect? Patients and us. They reduce the reimbursement to make over. You know, it's a complete failure. By the way, this is credit to Dr. Seb Reinek. So office-based surgery implementation step, you need space for our podiatric surgeries. About, you know, if you really have a small room, 10 by 10 is still doable. I prefer at least 10 by 12. Mine is 15 by 15. But I've helped a lot of doctors just convert their treatment rooms. Some, in some cases, you can be creative. You can have like at the end of the room and then in the back of it is, let's say, storage space. Just break the wall and then you make it slightly bigger. And as long as you can fit mini CM in there, you can still perform minimally invasive surgery. You can do surgical draping, sterile, sterile everywhere, just like same grade. You can, you can have that high level you know, surgical experience for your patients. You need staff training, obviously. Your staff needs to learn circulator skills and, you know, scrub tech skills, which is all trainable. And you do need solid documentation to protect your practice, pre-op, intra, post-op, consent form, and all that. So here's another proof, okay? This is the directly from Medicare's website. 28285 per hammer toe, Facility, $400. This was like 2020, I believe. So probably it's less now. Non-facility is 30% more. 28308, lesser metatarsal osteotomy, 420 versus 626. So facility is a hospital. Non-facility is your office. Again, you're exactly apple to apple. Same CPT. 28296 for Bunya. 567 versus, see, almost double, $1,000. Illinois, I know, even Medicare pays you like $1,100. And New Jersey, I believe one of our clients in my network, MIS network, is like $1,500. So even Medicare will pay you almost double. I hope you guys take home this message. You should consider taking it to uh, your office space. Everything's double. Imagine you do exact same number of procedures if you do it in the office and implement MIS because it's easier to do it, right? You don't need a lot of fancy equipment, you know, and do the right way. You can still perform many frenetical procedures, MIS, and without expensive hardware play system. Can you see those ridiculous uh, hardware fixation system, $5,000 to $8,000 system? You can do it none. Or if you don't feel comfortable, you can do temporary K-wire fixation, which is like $8 to $10. I'm talking about your hardware, hard cost, right? 28299, typical double osteotomy or first met osteotomy and aching, and you know, letter release, 646 versus 1100 double. So this is my office-based surgical suite. It looks big and wide, but I just use wide angle lens. So don't think this is like huge place. It's like 15 by 15. I'll tell you, investment costs, you can do it around 20 to $25,000. But mini CRM, even if that's the biggest investment for you, you can do, you can find, I have a lot of resources. You can find um, like re refurbished one with one year guarantee, one year warranty, and, you know, you can get somewhere around 12 to 15. If you want really higher, like newer model, then maybe $25,000 range, but they do have a leasing option. So you can, your monthly payment is like $300. By the way, if you get mini CRM, you can not only use for surgery, but you can use for non-surgical, such as like foreign body examination. You can do fluoroscopy guidance injection. You can do for arthritic patients and like hallux rigidus, you can do, uh, joint motion study. I mean, these are all non-surgical billable to insurance companies. So easily a couple of patients a week, you're going to be already paying for your mini CRM. So don't think that as a cost so much. 
It's almost like investment. You get return on investment in after two, two patients. Okay? So look at this. Return on investment. Let's say like 1500 for a bunion. These are all real number if you do it in the office, right? So you, and then I charge a lot higher because I opted out of most insurance plan. In my personal practice, I don't even take Medicare. I only take Blue Cross. Uh, here, Illinois, still, they reimburse decent. So that's the only insurance I take. But this is based on insurance plan. So let's say average $1,200. It's very, very conservative, very doable if you do it in the office. $1,200. Let's say you perform exostectomy, um, you know, like flexor tenotomy, capsulotomy, uh, some hammer to procedures, maybe one bunion a week, you know, a couple of tailors bunion a month. I mean, it's very easy to, you know, increase numbers because it's everything's under control and systemized in your office. $12,000 in addition, additional revenue is very, very, very realistic. So $12,000 extra times, let's say 12 months, that's $144,000 a year extra. Let's say even if you work 10 months a year, it'll be still $120,000 extra in your practice if you start performing MIS and if you do it in your office. Make sense? So again, performing surgical procedure, at your office-based surgery suite is your next blue ocean strategy of podiatry practice. Okay, so summary, three things I did today for you guys. Number one, never stop marketing. Number two, implement MIS if you want to transform. Number three, perform your procedures at office-based surgical suite. Now, how can you actually achieve your goal fast and effective? Many doctors, when I say seven-figure practice, and doctors say someday, or let's say you already do seven-figure and you want to go for even, let's say seven-figure, but you want to work a couple of less days. So you want only work like three days instead of five days. And most doctors will say, yeah, someday, TJ, someday. I'm working on it someday. But let me give you some, my secret. I like to look at the end goal first, instead of, okay, I do here now and today and tomorrow, I'll get there someday. I go completely reverse engineer. I look at myself and visualize I have seven figure podiatry practice now. That's my secret. In order for you to have seven-figure practice right now, what needs to be done month before? What needs to be done two months before? What needs to be done quarter, three months before? What needs to be done a year before your seven-figure practice? And I reverse engineer. It's maybe hard to visualize, but that's how I work. I'm very results-oriented and goal-oriented. You know, by the way, side story, I came to United States. Thank you for giving me heart. I don't know who gave me heart. It's flying through the screen. <laughs> I came to United States. I was 19 years old. Imagine yourself, put, put yourself in my shoes. I was 19 already grown up, kind of adult, right? Came from South Korea with very little spoken English. I just wanted better future. So I didn't think twice, came to United States. I chose Tennessee. Why? Because at the time there was no internet. It was back in 1990, back in 1990. I went to library, look at the stats, of possible Korean population of every state. And I wanted to choose the least number of Koreans because I wanted to Americanize as fast as possible. It was brave, young and wild, right? 19 years old. And I don't regret a bit. I came straight to Maryville, Tennessee, small town. 
and became United States citizen, became a doctor. So imagine what I had to go through. I was super goal oriented. For me, it was survival, not happy, alcoholic, dancing, party, college days for me. I was every day, I was counting my end goal, and then I worked toward it. And I think that kind of developed my philosophy, my integrity, along with martial arts uh, experience, that kind of made me who I am now. So anyways, I'd like you to think the goal first, and it's doable. It's doable. Don't think it's impossible. I've helped so many doctors achieve seven figures. So my advice to you, don't try alone. You got to find the best vehicle to get you there and best coach who can give you that system and accountability. So let me ask you a question. What if there is a solution that has the best vehicle and the best coach so you don't have to waste your time and resource? So you will implement, let's say, if you are interested in MIS and office-based surgery, less than 60 days, 60 days. So here's uh, Dr. Tim Shea. He's been working with me for three and a half years. He's 77 years old. He's in California. He's now MIS star. He's a, he does MIS like eight to 10 case a week. Listen to him just for first 10 seconds. And uh, as soon as you get enrolled, can you share how many patients already have you scheduled and even performed? Yeah, since uh, well, it's been about three weeks now, I think about three yeah. weeks. I have seven cases scheduled uh, before the end of the year. And I have, and as I said, I did one today, uh, soft tissue wise, but it was still conceptually mental incision. Uh, and my, my plan from now on is to, uh, if we're going to be talking about fixing and correcting stuff, uh, it's going to be in the uh, office-based minimal invasive surgery, minimal, yeah, minimal invasive surgery approach. I would say I probably have on the books coming up about 10 to 15 people. Okay. So now he's our North, I mean, I'm sorry, Western Regional Director of my program, MIFAS Elite. And he's now helping many other doctors also. And himself still practicing, driven, committed, helping so many patients every week. So do you want to stand out and increase your revenue and profit? I would like you to pay attention. Okay, let's be serious a little bit. Do you want to stand out and increase your revenue and profits? I practice what I preach. I still have my practice. Disclaimer, I'm not doing seven figure now. Some people say, oh, it's a bummer. I've hit seven figure many years. However, I am moving my focus and mission to help other podiatrists and colleagues. So I only work two days a week. So imagine two days a week, I still do six fifty to $700,000 a year. If you do four days a week, for sure you can hit seven figure. For sure. I see, Imaze, oh, Imaze, you're here. You're in my program. You just joined. Awesome. She says, I'm building my MIS procedures as we speak. Go TJ. You made it happen. Thank you. Thank you for being. You, she joined three months ago, and she's already performing MIS in the office. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for joining this. All right. So which area is your bottleneck? Because I'm giving you real action steps here. Is it bottleneck? Are you fearful? Are you doubtful? Are you a little bit afraid of implementing MIS in your office based surgery? Which many people are. I get it. What if I mess up? You know, I don't know what the documentation. I, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to teach my staff. A lot of roadblocks, but nothing is impossible. What about you have a problem getting consistent patient lead flow to your practice consistently? What about, oh, TJ, I have no problem with the leads, but I don't know how to convert my patients, especially if it's non-cover service. Nobody says yes. Whenever I think about talking about money in front of my patient, 
I get sick to my stomach. I cannot talk about money in front of my patients. Very common. So you may have a problem increasing your patient's acceptance to your treatment solutions. Even if you know and you believe that is the best treatment solutions, if it is non-covered service, it's very easy for us to say, well, if you don't want this and you cannot pay for it, then there's another alternative. Let's go to this route. Isn't it common? But if you think about if this was a heart problem, heart problem, would you give your patients, you know you can fix with treatment A is the best solution, but only because insurance doesn't cover, you're going to offer them treatment B? Think about it for a second. If this patient is your mom, your dad, your child, would you have your doctor recommend you for your family less effective solution because insurance doesn't cover? You know what? In fact, you're giving them this service. We are obligated to provide the best treatment solutions. So that might be your bottleneck. So if you're interested, if you liked what I presented tonight, I have a Podiatry Profits Academy. And Imaze here, surprise, to my surprise, I didn't know you were going to be here. But anyway, Imaze is in our profit, Podiatry Profits Academy. So I have a solution, proven, proven programs, not just me, hundreds of uh, other doctors. I have a testimonial after testimonial. I can show you the link. So I have three programs I can show, I can tell you, MIFAS Accelerator, The Profit Alchemy, Midas Medical Marketing. So you don't have to remember the names. I'm not going to quiz you. So MIFAS Accelerator is all about MIS. You will implement MIS procedures in less than six months. Most of them start within three months. You will set up an office-based surgery suite within six months. You will have all the documents and resources you need for office-based surgery and uh, minimally invasive surgery right away. You will attend my private cadaver lab to improve your MIS skills. So that's what MIFAS Accelerator provide. You will get those results. The profit alchemy, you will increase patient acceptance to your treatment solutions. You will learn how to set up a hybrid concierge model practice. I call it hybrid concierge because you can now finally, proudly, comfortably opt out of your the, the ridiculous insurance networks at your choice. And you can proudly provide as a non-participating provider the best treatment solutions. And this program teaches you. And you will maximize your profits. And you will craft offers that patients cannot refuse. So that's more business side, practice management side program, the profit alchemy. Midas Medical Marketing, you will have ever replenishing patient leads. This is all about marketing. You will be positioned as an authority of your niche through social media, training, and coaching. You will have systems to build consistent five-star reviews. Remember I told you about review system, review management, and social proof? So Midas Medical is responsible for helping you generate leads and five-star reviews, and you will be an authority in your region. Qualified patients who are ready to pay you, they're gonna, you're going to have that kind of leads. All right. So these are some screenshots of my clients. You can see what these doctors are start scheduling. Quoted 1500, quoted 4K, minimum of another 3Ks, law of attraction. This was my profit alchemy client. Um, this doctor, hammer toe, lesser med osteotomy, starts scheduling like every week. Larry Best is one of our top doctor's clients. I'm not going to read it. So I also help you get board certification for MIS. Now there is board certification uh, by ABMSP, American Board of Multiple Specialties in Podiatry. They come up with MIS board certification three years ago. So my program, my cadaver lab is one of uh, the, the qualified 
the programs that you can get signed off and you can actually exam. Larry Kales, this is about MIFAS Accelerator, MIS program. I have many. These are actual screenshots. So he says he performed at the surgery center at the time and everybody was saying, wow, that's it, you're done. It was because it was MIS. I have this friend and the referral started coming. I told them though, you won't be seeing me at this surgery center for long. You know what that means? He's gonna start doing in the office. Donna, great, great uh, doctors, all podiatrists, colleagues. $4,700 pay in cash in surgery in office. She booked $5,000 concierge case, opted out of one insurance plan and offered MIS case. So you have two options, guys, two doors. It's not like matrix you wanna take red pill or blue pill. You have a yellow door and blue door. If you open yellow door, you're gonna to go to where you are now, what you've been doing. If you open blue door, I'll be waiting for you right behind that door. So if you choose the blue door and you're ready to make commitment to increase cash flow to 100K per month, think about it just for a minute. I'm not, okay, transparency, I'm not giving you income claim, income disclaimer right here. If you work the way I suggest and advise and coach you, it is doable. If you want to increase your cash flow to 100K per month, without adding more work hours. In fact, most clients I work with, they reduce days. Because if you think about it, why did you become a doctor? If you, I want you to think about it for a second. Yes, we want to help more people. I want to create a nick on this earth, but didn't you become a doctor also for providing better life for yourself and your family? To spend more quality time for your family, for your kids, their soccer practice, their dancing, how many times you miss that because you're stuck in the hospital or you're doing all those stupid billing through your EHR to not to get that Medicare audit. That's not why we became a doctor. And I want you to, after tonight, I want you to think about that. We live once, we go one way. Right, It's like one-way parachute. You jump on a plane, plane, you're going down to the ground. That's the end of our life in this earth. Where you are right now, and would you end your life or your career that way? There's another way. I just want you to open your eyes and ears. There is a light at the end of the tunnel, which is, I'm telling you from my bottom of my heart, which is, Proven pathway, proven pathway, shortcut. Anyway, if you want that blue door, let's talk. So here's my offer, guys. In the next five days, I'm going to have some time slots open for you. There's no obligation. I'm not telling you to pay for this. Just 15 minute like phone call or Zoom meeting with me or my team. Most likely me. I want to meet you over Zoom just for 15 minutes. And I want to see where you are. And if any of my program and my idea that I presented to you, if you have any interest to see the possibility. So here's the, here's the uh, link, okay? I'm going to type it in patiently, drtjon.com. Maybe Sarah, if you can type this a few times for me, I would appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah, we got to change it to everyone, right? Yeah, can you do that for me? So, sure, no thank you. Sarah is going to type the link. Remember, you look at the end goal first and then you reverse engineer, right? But this, I'm telling you, first step you need to do, if you want to change, Book a call, 15 minutes. That's all I want ask you. And then let me see if you are a right fit. Let me see which one is your bottleneck. 
if I cannot provide you a solution, I'm not interested in holding you any, for any reason. I'll find the direction, better person or better program for you. Because I'm busy, guys. I'm busy enough. I work two days a week. I go to seminars. I run these three programs. I go to, I also have mastermind group. We have almost 20 mastermind members. I help them. We meet them every week. The MIS Accelerator, we meet every Thursday night. We go over cases. I have a profit alchemy. So imagine my life. I love working and my mission is to help you guys now. So I just set next five days for you. And I'm not asking you to pay for anything. All I'm asking you, let's talk. Let's talk. Okay. So again, go to this link. That's the first step. Book a free discovery session call with me, and then we'll diagnose your situation and we'll help you find out if my model will work for you. So what's holding you back? You want to go back to where you are currently and keep struggling alone? I'm, my programs are not about programs. My programs, guys, is a community. Collegiality. Is that a word? Collegiality. <laughs> Camaraderie, yes. <laughs> yes. that's what camaraderie. I, yeah, yeah, camaraderie. <laughs> you know, I love to create a group of community. You will never see this type of community. That's what every single person says. A lot of people think podiatrists what eat when you're young or something like that. In my program and my community, it's completely opposite. I take that huge pride that we have very strong community, community supportive community. Um, and can, yeah, okay, you already did it, HTTPS, so it's clickable. So if you guys click the link, I wanna see some actions, right? If you want to, we'll talk. This is about you, your practice, not me. I already accomplished for my own. Right, but this is about you. We live once. I want you to take home with that message. What do you want to be remembered? What do you want to remember your own career? Your self significance, your status quo? Doctors. I mean, you guys are my colleagues. So, would you take the first step and let me guide you to build a profitable and future proof? Seven-figure practice, I got the proven models. So again, book a call. I'm looking forward to talking to you. That's the end of my, if you want to contact me, that's my email address there, tjan at drtjan.com. Let me finish this presentation and I want to give you two offers. Okay, TJ. I'm not sure if you are genuine. I, I get it. If you never see me, um, if you still have that, you know, you want, I got two offers for you. One, I have a book I told you. I published, it's in Amazon. It's $20 per copy. And if you want to get an audio book, it's $30. However, my book, I want to offer you for free. So you just have to cover like $7 shipping. Thank you for heart. Just, just pay for the shipping and I'll send you actual physical book with some more resources in the white envelope and I'll send it to your physical address. So that website, www.optoutbook.com, optoutbook.com. So that's my first gift. Thank you. Second gift, I have about three tickets left for my upcoming July International MIFAS 2022 event. And that event is already sold out. But like I said, I have about three spots left. Oh, PM, okay. Well, here you're gonna love it. Early bird special was done last weekend. However, just for webinar attendees, I'm gonna honor you early bird rate Three tickets left. It's www.imifas2022.com. 
So you got to put www first for some reason. There we go. I need first 2022.com. So those are my two gifts just for being for you guys being here. You can get the free book or you can get the early bird special for our world class International MIFAS Cadaver Lab Conference. It's a CE accredited. You'll get 12.75. That's last time I counted. Two day intensive, one day lecture, one day full day cadaver. Each person will get cadaver leg on your own. So you can actually practice. It's a first class venue, breakfast, lunch included. And then in the first day morning, I'm going to have a very special state of union for podiatrist uh, special master class for the attendees. That one's not CE, but you're going to learn a lot, I hope. And we're going to have a great time. Meet each other in person. All right. That's it for me. I still got so much energy, but, you know, I, I was going to say, do you? Do you have time for any Q&A, Dr. On, or do you of have course, to? Yeah, of course. I, I'm here for everybody. Awesome. So, yeah, so um, we don't have any questions coming in at the moment, but I just want to give everybody a little bit of time to do so. But I'll kind of get us um, started. There's a, we talked about a lot. Well, we, I say, we, like, I did nothing. You talked a lot about, <laughs> you did a, oh, yeah. a lot of talking this evening. Um, so, as you know, I am all on board for niche practice, whatever, whatever your company is, obviously everyone online is a DPM. So niche practice, niche practice, niche practice. When you first went niche, um, I guess, what was the shift? Because I, when I talk to DPMs about this, there is a fear that they will pigeonhole themselves and lose specific patients. What do you say to DPMs who kind of have that um, caution? Oh, say it again. What was the question? When, so if you are recommending a practice to go niche, if they're going to niche in w whether it be minimally invasive surgery, or maybe they um, are really only niching in seeing diabetic patients. Sure. But if they're nervous about like pigeonholing themselves where they feel like, well, if I put all of my marketing dollars and just telling everyone that I'm the bunion king, I'm not going to get any of these types of patients, or I'm not going to get almost like they are nervous that the, um, no. the yeah. right. Yeah. That's a common fear. So what I call it generalist versus specialist, you have to become a subspecialist of specialist. Just being a podiatrist is not competitive enough and it's not profitable enough. If you look at dentistry there, there's orthodontist. And why they're, you know, killing this industry? Because they went all in for one niche. So even if it's non-surgical, let's say you're just only going for maybe heel pain specialist. Much better to be one area, I call it one inch wide, 10 mile deep. Instead of one inch deep, 10 mile wide, you provide A to Z a la carte. Those times are over. And anybody in your neighbor podiatrist will provide that. But how many will be so strong in one or two area that you become really expert and then you start marketing? Patients, patients respect that. And, but premise of once you decide your niche, you have to be truly good at it. And number two, you have to be able to defend it like hell. I tell my clients every time, you choose your niche to MIS, you better be good at it. You better provide the best surgery that you can do and defend it in case someone, whatever, backfires at you. So that's why I provide a lot of documentation, resources, and equip you physically, mentally, and you know that these procedures are the best treatment options for this patient. So those are important factors. I really think um, if you have a fear in niche, like deciding niche instead of doing everything. Right, absolutely. Well, and I love what you said about being really, you if you, once you decide you have to be really good at it. And I always um, lecture that it's brand promise. That is brand promise. I promised you. <laughs> 
<laughs> that I'm going, this is what I do. And when you show up, you're going to see, I'm going to deliver on that expectation for sure. Yeah, by the way, Apple, if you guys know Apple, before Steve Jobs came back, because they fired, right? Apple was founded by Steve Jobs, but he got fired by his own employees, right? But then when they rebring, when they bring Steve Jobs back, they were doing horrible. Why? Because they're going over everywhere. And then when Steve Jobs came back to Apple, first thing he did, he slashed 80% of their product line. And then he just went for what they were known for, Mac. And then now look at the Apple. Ben Hogan, if you think about Ben Hogan, or maybe some young guys don't know who Ben Hogan is, Jack Nicholas. do you picture him doing basketball practice? <laughs> you know, but there we go. Thank you. Can you say anything about golf in front of Ben Hogan or Jack Nicholas? No, you can't because they've proven it. They walk the path. They're the top of the mountain. So when you claim your niche, no matter what it is, I want you to be good at it, really go deeper, and then defend it. Yeah, so we had a bunch of questions kind of roll in while you were talking. Uh, there was a few that came in that were specific to cases. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, so I imagine that's something that you probably would rather talk one-on-one -on -one with attendees about. Let me see. Seven, there seven. was some, um, do you do a lateral abductor release with yeah. MIS? Yeah, I do, Doc. I mean, MIS way, 64 blade go into the joint of first MTPJ, and then you go into out. Sometimes you get some bleeder, it's common, but you know, if you know how to do it, and I always like to combine with Revere Denisham or maybe silver Aiken Ostia, I mean, silver Aiken type of simpler bunion, I still like to do a lateral release. Most of the times it can correct some PASA, um, but yeah, I most MIS, I mean, MIS first rate procedures, I do lateral release. And then there was another one, uh, MIS for midfoot exostosis versus the open technique. Yeah, oh, doc, MIS midfoot. I mean, we call it out to in versus in to out. Instead of, because midfoot, there's a lot of tendon attachment and et cetera. If you learn, it's slightly more advanced, but if you go inside of bone, inside first, and then you create like gentle osteotomy inside, creating void space, and then let the outer structure that causes ulcer or midfoot collapse or, or exososis, you can let them kind of sink in because you create a void inside. So this technique, you can avoid a lot of tendons and you know vascular structures uh, so that yeah, midfoot MIS procedures been performed beautifully. I have another question. Um, one of the things Sarah and I are really trying to get in touch with is young physicians and kind of, you know, resonating with them and providing content that, um, that they find valuable. So not to put you on the spot, but if you could deliver a piece of advice for young physicians that are just getting started, wondering what they, what type of practice they want to be in, what type of things they want to focus on, what would your advice be to them? Well, young guys, obviously more familiar with social media. So I want you to you know, establish your social media position. But again, if you choose certain area as your niche, it's much more attractive and memorable. So instead of, oh, we cover everything, you know, why not you find somewhere that you have passion, you know, Passion has to be there, okay? You cannot fake passion. You can be good at anything because we're trainable, learnable, uh, MIS learnable skills. But if you don't have a passion, it's hard to fake and you're going to get burned out. But if you have a passion in it, you don't, you don't get burned out easily. And you can be, um, I think you can be very successful. And also young physicians, I'm not recommending you to go complete cold cash only practice concierge model yet. Reason is because still through insurance plans, you will learn the dynamics of healthcare system. 
you can still provide Medicare patients and geriatric patients and, you know, gaining some experience. And um, once you really build your hands-on experience and some wisdom that cannot be, again, uh, fate, right? The, the ex- wisdom through experience, I, we cannot fake it. You know, when I work with, you know, doctors like Tim Shea, he's 77, Robert Parker, he's in our mastermind, he's uh, 80 years old and he's still practicing every day. And, you know, I mean, the wisdom these guys get and they provide to our members in our Thursday meetings is amazing. So before you build that wisdom, young guys, you need to build some experience. So I'd recommend participate some insurance plans and then, you know, maybe start finding where you have most passion and then start learning deeper. And then again, don't be a foreigner to social media. You can just be good at it, practice it every day in Instagram and Facebook and also build YouTube channel. I mean, I'm big bullish on YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel. If you guys are interested in learning more about what I provide to colleagues, I have a YouTube channel too. So yeah, that's what I recommend. Is that too long answer for a short question? No, I, I, and I think that's great too, because I mean, I know, you know, my background is marketing. And when I started marketing, I didn't, I didn't graduate and be like, you know what? I want to do marketing for podiatry. (laughs) That was not on my radar at all. And it's kind of one of those things where you experiment with a lot of things. You, I always say, say yes, until you can afford to say no. Um, And get your hands dirty with a lot of different things because you don't know what you don't know. I had, I didn't even know that this industry existed when I first went, I, I started in healthcare marketing as well. And podiatry was just not on my radar. And I fell into marketing for an orthotics lab and, you know, 10 years later, 12 years later, here I am. And it's just, it's one of those things where, yeah, you just have to try a lot and then you kind of discover, it's like, you know, you want to be a podiatrist. It's just like, I know I want to do marketing. I didn't know I want to do this specific type of marketing. You don't know if you want to do this specific type of podiatry. And so I think it's very interesting that you kind of, I mean, it's a bummer that, you know, had I known that I could niche in this several years ago, that would have been great, but you don't know until you know. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I mean, marketing guys, any industry, if you want to develop the branding and lead generation marketing um, and the authority, build authority, um, you know, they're this deep. Marketing is deep. I love marketing. Um, and, you know, more you learn, there's so many factors and pillars inside of marketing. So I'm not pretending, you know, I know everything. I'm learning every day. I still belong to two masterminds, nothing to do with podiatry. One is sales mastermind and one is marketing mastermind. And then, you know, I love learning more marketing so I can provide better strategies and tactics to my clients, which you guys. That's another key factor. And I'm glad you touched on the fact that you invest your time and resources into uh, education that's not in podiatry, because sometimes, you know, we find ourselves bogged down with all the things in our business, you know, learning new techniques and things like that. We don't take the time to explore ways to do things differently in other types of conferences. Like Sarah and I try to make a point to attend various business conferences or leadership conferences because they may not have anything to do with what we're doing in podiatry, but we always take something away from them that we can apply. And so like podcasts, articles, masterminds, conferences, anything like that that's outside of your industry really opens up your mind to new new ways and new ideas totally um alicia said could you please show the obs setup slide i set it up for you so you can watch you can look at it here we go so this is set up and if you have any particular question about this setup you know type it away uh okay um so We will be sharing this recording. It's going to be available on our Practice Partner Academy archive page. You can watch the recording of this webinar and all of our other past sessions. Um, And then look for an email that'll come out from us tomorrow with our, in case you missed it, 
content that we've published in the last few weeks, and we'll include a feature with the bonuses um, from this that Dr. Ahn talked about and the recording and things like that. So if you missed any part of it, you can definitely catch the replay. Um, and then you can email Dr. Ahn. Did we put your email in, in the chat? I don't know if we did. Mike, it's tjahn at drtjahn.com. I'll type it in right now for everyone. Very cryptic. <laughs> <laughs> And um, like you said, he's got a seminar coming up in July. He's giving away, a, well, not giving away, but he's opening up a few extra tickets for that. So that link is in the chat here um, and we will share it again tomorrow. So you have the opportunity to grab some of those tickets before they're gone. And um, he's also gonna be at the AMFAS, the Academy for Minimally Invasive Foot and Ankle Surgery event in June in New Orleans. So if you're gonna, be there or you're interested in joining, he's gonna be presenting that. Um, Dr. Ahn, do you know what your topic, what I, you're gonna to present on? Well, I can talk about shortening the learning curve. I mean, could it be MIS or maybe I can say, I have many presentations. Maybe I can present like three, um, three simple MIS procedures you can perform next month. Awesome, so that'll be good too. So. He's constantly putting out content. I dropped his YouTube link in the chat. You can check that out. Um, any other questions that we want to touch on before we wrap this up and say good night? Again, doctors, thank you so much for attending. I, I had pleasure uh, interacting with all of you. If you want to transform, remember the first step, book a call. It takes 15 minutes, possibly your life-changing epiphany might happen in that 15 minutes. I love that. <laughs> uh, and I did look at your book a call link and you have lots of sessions available. So everyone should be able to find a time that works for them. So that's good. Cool. Good. All right. Well, thanks again, everybody. Um, obviously, don't forget to check in with our future practice partner, Academy Sessions. We have one on Monday where we are be, we're going to be talking more, a little bit more along this line in terms of marketing with uh, cash lasers, laser specifically, but then other cash services and marketing. And um, it's presented with David Zuckerman, DPM, and Sarah Bremeyer. I don't know if you guys know who she is. Um, <laughs> so uh, tune in on Monday. Go to podiatry. Uh, I can't even remember the name of my own website, podiatrymeetings.com. Go to our Practice Partner Academy webpage. The order, the order form, the registration form is there to register for that upcoming webinar. And I hope to see you guys on Monday. But thank you so much for joining us tonight. Have a good evening. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Ahn. So much. Time. Time. That was awesome. We're, awesome. we're so okay. honored to have you join us. Thank uh, you. No, my so pleasure. Good. Thank you. All right. Good night. Bye -bye. Good night. Bye.